I've been back looking in the new books section at the local library, and this time I brought home Botanical Embroidery by Maggie Schnooker, and it claims to have 30 effortless designs that show the beauty of nature. I love these embroidery books. This is my favorite thing going into 2002, and I know I keep bringing home new ones and saying, this is the one I'm going to stitch things from. And I'm going to say it again. What I like about this book is that the projects are so pretty. I love the whole botanical thing. And compared to some of the other books that I have picked up lately, these look simple. These look like I could do them. Like all good books, it's got a section on the materials you want to use and guidelines for how to do the stitching and prepare your hoop and tie off your thread and all of that. It looks like something that will hold your hand as you are learning how to do this. And the projects are gorgeous, starting with Luminous Sunflower. These call for DMC threads. They don't take that many colors. And I love that she shows for each one the little coils of thread there. So if you are substituting, I think she gives you some good guidelines or she gives you the means of how to do it. The patterns are full size, so you don't have to play around with enlarging. You are going to have to trace them from the book. They're not iron-on, but I wouldn't cut the, the iron-on transfer pages out of the other books that I own. And yeah, this is a library book, but if I owned it, I wouldn't be ripping pages out of it. Daisy Meadow Cluster is one of my favorites. Partially because back in the day, my mom was taking toll painting classes and she painted some very similar daisies. So I've got an idea that what if I stitch those on black fabric because hers was on bla a black background and hung it next to hers, which I have. Lush Plumeria Morning. I have lots of ideas about what I want to do and I am not going to feel bad for not knowing when I'm going to do it. This one is Sun Drenched Blanket Flowers. I think when I was a kid, these are what mom and grandma called straw flowers, which I have not seen since I was a kid. If you happen to know if those are the same thing, let me know. Texas Mountain Laurel. The simplicity of these is just gorgeous. Forget-me-nots, bees, and rosemary. And I love that they are finished in hoops. Floral Strawberry Tart. As simple as they are, they have very well-chosen details. Pink Lemonade cone, flower, cone Flowers and Mint. That one's got some French knots going on there. Rainy Day Perennials. And Lemon Branch Daydream. This is the other one that I am seriously, seriously thinking about stitching because even though there are a million little leaves there, I could stitch a million little leaves. I know I could. Apricot Carnations and Velvety Lamb's Ear. And look at the vase. I love the flowers, but it's that vase that is what appeals to me most about this one. Milk White Crinkled Peonies. Wouldn't these be pretty on a kitchen wall? Pretty Protea Punch. Or in a sewing room, because I think everything flowery and cute goes in a sewing room. Idyllic Irises. Again, I love the jar that those are in. Bundled Market Tulips. These all have step-by-step -step pictures, not as many step-by-step -step pictures as I've seen in some other embroidery books. But again, they're, they're not as complex, so they probably don't need 87 pictures showing you how to make an eyeball. Freshly Foraged Lavender. Wild Walnut Wood Slice. I like that one. Night Blooming Moonflowers. So picture the daisies on fabric like that, and that is what I'm all excited about the possibility of. Crisp Oak and Juniper Wreath. I am going to need to buy my own copy of this book. That's just all there is to it. 
moss patch and ruby toadstools and all of that gorgeous, glorious moss is French knots. But then look at the ferns. I am going to have to learn to do French knots. Now we're moving on to desert vines. Warm desert mirage. Blooming prickly pear cactus. Oh, what are you? Dewy opalescent succulents. That's a speech therapy phrase. Sunrise over organ pipe cactus. Oh, wandering air plant. And urban jungle. It has house plants. Monstrous majestic monstera. I cannot keep a house plant alive. I have the worst luck with them. Dreamy verdant hanging. So maybe I should just stitch some house plants and be happy with that. Flourishing propagation station. Again, it's got bottles and I don't know why I am so excited about the idea of stitching bottles, but I am. Poised prayer plant. And Fiddle leaf, fig foliage, where is that one? I like that it shows you the actual plant with the stitchery. Because some of these, I know the names, but if you asked me what these plants looked like, I could not have told you. I like this book. It, I like the whole stitching house plants idea. I know it's a trend right now. It is a bandwagon I think I am happy to jump on to. Again, found this one at the library. It is a new book, came out in 2021, so it should be easy to track down if you want to. I will put a link in the description. Maggie is the creator of Maggie Jo's Studio, so she's got a Facebook page and Instagram and all the good stuff. And you can find out more about her and her work, and I think I saw that there's a free pattern if you sign up for her mailing list. So you can get a taste of her work without buying the book. I'd recommend the book if you this is up your alley and the type of thing you like to do. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. I've got a whole bunch of book reviews in the Sewing Room Bookshelf playlist if you want to check out more of the embroidery I am excited about lately. I'll be back with you with more videos soon.